Hey, welcome back to Soda Time Restoration. Back on the Vendo 39, uh, we've installed the new plate. Basically, all I did is cut a plate, laid it on top of the, the existing one, which was in pretty good shape. Just had a, a, a hole around the drain tube. So, basically cut the plate. Uh, I had it powder coated just like the tank. And probably one of the things... I'll get asked questions on and I'll grab a tube of it here. Part number 08609. It's a it's a window weld uh, 3M product. Works super super fast. Uh last night before I shut down, I stuck that plate in there, stuck me two bricks on top of this and just kept that down on there. I mean, it's just solid as a rock right now. I'm taping off the trim edge. So when you're caulking this, it's going to have a nice, super, super clean edge. So each area that I uh, tape off, I'm going to put my, uh, my caulking up there, and then when I get to the end... I'll pull the tape edge off there so the caulking will have a straight line. You could do a single bead. And on this one here, you could actually take a little bit of lacquer thinner on a rag and just do a white. But I'm going to do a little bit different tonight. Just try to uh, get a nice, clean, straight edge. We'll see how it works. So I'll kind of show you where we got going on here. We're going to put a bead in there and smear it out as best we can. But I think this tape should give us a really nice, nice clean edge. I've always done it, put the bead in and wiped it. But I've seen what it can look like being taped off. A straight seam across there. Man, it looks really good. Let me get my caulking gun ready. Like I said, it's a 3M product. I used this on another machine probably earlier in the year when I used it, and it worked really good. And, it, and that plate is just solid in there. I mean, so there, it's literally a double plate right now. Let's see how this works. All right, here we go. And as you're doing it, try to get you a really nice bead. We will smear this to get a, a nice smooth look. This product is really sticky. You get it on your hands, it takes forever to get it off. So, if you're getting any thing close to you make sure you get wiped off and it's a little tough to get off doesn't take long to do that's for sure make sure you get everything covered uh, if you get something in a spot you can wipe it off usually fairly quickly I've seen people say if you'll put a little bit of a ball, let it kind of ball up out there at the end, something similar to the, like that. Just let it kind of sit up. That will cause a, it to seal off inside this cap. It won't get hard, but get a little ball if you have to dab it up a little bit. Let it kind of ball up on the end there. And hopefully that will seal the tip off. Uh, if not, you may be cutting a piece off to uh, get it going again. Now, 
We're gonna do a little test. Get you a rag. We're gonna try to wipe it without using any chemical at all. So we use a paper towel first. Let's see which one uh, actually wipes it the best. Tough to tell until you pull the tape off. Like right, I so say, put some gloves on. Because <laughs> it is some crazy stuff to get off. Slip some gloves on right quick here. Now, I'm going to do it with a little bit of acetone. Let's see how that smears it. There's always a little bit of a trick to figuring out how something works. Eh, that does pretty good. What I've got is a little bit of a point. Kind of a little little tip. I'm wrapping around the tip just to kind of get it into the corners and then drag it through the through the seam. That should apply enough pressure to get it in there. The goal would be to get everything covered and uh, not too much I think the acetone will wipe it off of this uh, powder coat all right. But uh, we're going to let this set up just a second. I can tell it's already setting up. We're going to see how it looks once we pull the, the tape off. Make sure you don't see any seams in there before you do. It's actually setting up pretty nicely. But it is messy. Definitely wear gloves. Don't do like what I just did. Try to do it without then putting gloves on over dirty fingers. I'm gonna go ahead and peel it while it's, uh, I think if you wait too long, you're gonna cause yourself problems uh, because it's gonna set up really tight on your tape. So make sure you get it off fairly quickly. All right, let's peel it off. Kind of see where we're at. This may take several gloves because once you get a dirty spot on your glove, you're just going to throw them away. So when you do this, make sure you do some wide tape. So like right now, where I've kind of really squeezed that out, really it, it went into the tape. So if you got your tape really filled up with the caulking edge, it's kind of hard to pull it off. We're gonna try something right quick. See how our, our version of carburetor cleaner works compared to oh yeah carburetor cleaner is a lot quicker uh, one last piece here the lines look good we can probably go back in and touch up some spots if we don't like an area there we go get it started yeah, I think you would have trouble trying to peel this off the next day. Just a gut feeling. Uh, maybe if I let it sit up a little bit longer, it wouldn't be so uh, messy. I'm going to do a little clean up here. 
Mm. Believe it or not. WD-40 on a rag does pretty good. Uh, so we're probably going to let this set up tonight. Uh, we'll recheck, make sure everything looks good. We'll try to get this area as cleaned up as much as possible. But that's uh, one way of sealing off the plate. Don't know. Uh, I've done different ways. This is a little bit different. I like the clean stripe uh, edge. If you went in with a, a regular caulking product, you would just do a, a literally with your finger and go along here and just get as clean. It would be bulkier. It'd be a little wider, which either one of them, either one's going to work. But as long as you can get that, that bottom piece all sealed off, that's the, the whole thing. Okay. The next process on the tank is uh, getting the, the drain tube installed. A critical piece. You need to be very cautious on fitment. Make sure everything is where it should be at. Uh, you'll have a, a drop down tube that goes inside. You wanna make sure that seals off very nicely. We're gonna, there's an epoxy glue that comes with the kit. Funtronics has the availability there. Uh, so we're gonna mix this up. And you'll see that epoxy kind of turning white. Let's see if that's coming through on the mix there. Most critical piece is probably getting the first, the tube installed inside. So what's going to happen, we're going to come up from the bottom piece here and come through this, and this is going to go down inside. And this will hit about midway inside the cavity here so i always put a little bit in there doesn't take much put it on both of them There's a little bit of lubrication to get it in there and then it does set up really tight Pretty tough to get out after you get it in there. So we're gonna get, we're gonna feed this from the from the bottom. We'll do the top glue piece uh, after we get this in there. We'll come back in and and reset this. But let me get this bottom piece in right quick. It just shoves up through a little port underneath, and I'll get a camera view on this. Here in a second. <clears throat> I don't like putting that glue right there at the top right now because I like to get this shoved in there really good and tight. I think we got her pretty good. So give you a view of that right quick. You'll see the tube there. You'll see two little holes up here. I can get my camera set just right. See two two holes there that we will be putting a bracket on. These two holes right here. That locks that tube in place to keep it from turning. So if anybody ever bumps this. Uh, that'll stay in place. We'll put uh, some plumber's putty around this uh, bottom piece here. I'll get some video of that, but uh, let's get the top piece in. Actually, I'll, let me leave this here. I'll show you how that bracket's going to look. So this bracket goes on, holds that tube like such, just like that. Those tubes will go there, so... That'll keep that thing from getting bumped, pushed around. We will uh, go to the top now. So this glue will, you got probably, oh, 
maybe five to 10 minutes. Don't push it very beyond that or you'll be mixing up some more. The packet is enough to do both these tubes and we're gonna shove this down here really good here as soon as I get everything kind of wiped out of the bottom of this tray. Make sure you get all the way around it. The key thing is make sure you've got everything bottomed out really good. So that's what we're getting ready to do right now. I'm gonna make sure I'm pushed up from the bottom here. As you see, I always kind of open that up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of that glue come down and then bring it back down. Get in the position I want it. That's feeling pretty good. get a little closer here so you can see it but make sure all your glue is sealing in there really well when I raise that up a little bit of glue went underneath that will seal the drain port off this is an area on maintenance wise if you're worried about maintenance get you a, a long sometimes it looks like just a little uh, round um, like you'd clean out a, a tube, uh, probably mm, six to eight inches long. Run that down through there uh, at least once a year. Uh, those get plugged up. And what happens, it backs the water up into here. It sets here, it rots everything out. Exactly what happened to this machine. This machine had no other issues other than this drain tube was not properly cleaned. Uh, probably ever. It, I think the tube looked really good, but it held the water and the water backed up and, and rotted basically just the drain area tube out. We'll put the little bottom piece with the two screws. I like to do that now to kind of get it held in place. Okay, that's in. Let's check our tube here right quick. Make sure we're still down. Feeling good there. And if you got some plumber's putty, this is a just a kind of precautionary product, a little plumber's putty, just a putty that we'll put around the bottom. I'll kind of knead this up a little bit. And we'll let that set overnight so it's good and solid. Okay. That will keep that pretty solid. So... It's locked in just like they had it at the factory. I'll give you a little shot of it here. There's your bracket. Your plumber's putty around there. Make sure that drain tube. If you grab it, it should feel pretty, pretty solid. This is precautionary. It's not really holding anything. Just keeps, if it ever gets bumped, uh, that drain tube will hook up here and go down then to your drain jar, little mason jar. Hang with us. Uh, we're going to drop the compressor in uh, yet this evening, so we'll be right back. We're going to get the compressor in. I'm going to try to show you how to slide this in without scratching anything up. So get you a couple of cloths. 
one of the critical areas probably will will be this get you something to kind of cover that front edge you're going to do the same thing at the bottom just something to uh, kind of protect your paint wipe this down one last time before we put this compressor in so we'll get our uh, one up top here one at the bottom I always put a box in between when you get these back you don't want to get that tube bent too much so something to kind of rest that on before you can get it installed but uh, you'll see uh, your cord uh, it'll run out uh, sometimes I run them through the bottom get it out of the way so let me get this down a little bit so you can see a little better if you're picking them up try to not grab anything on the copper line that's going to bend really easily I always try to grab these tubes here they're pretty strong we'll go ahead and pull our box out so grab these side ones set it up on your rag and you can sometimes place that right there don't put it on that copper tube so you're gonna have to tip on the long frame uh, evaporator condenser excuse me you need to have that dipped underneath so yeah if you got two people it's easier get their two legs hooked there for your uh, evaporator and then the condenser as you see needs to be raised up and then dropped in once you get to this stage keep it on the rag and we'll slide it all the way back in there try to keep from scratching up as much as possible pull the rag out and the last little piece Set in there just like that. Pretty tight. Pretty tight. I use uh, Olson's compressor works out of Indiana. Does all my units. I think he's nationally known great guy does great work these can be mounted several ways you want this to be in the air this is your thermostat uh, probably some people will see those I got an old one over there I think it's mounted some, something similar to that um, you could mount it to the side over here either way it'd be fine you just want to have this over as far as you can get it there is a slot right here well this has got to go through so this copper tubing needs to hit right in this area There's another little screw right here that attaches that we'll try to uh, get it set and I can see the back one there's a back hole there hopefully you're seeing this there's another back hole in the back but it's looking really good looks good as far as setting it in that's pretty well it you can run this cord through the back for now we're going to just kind of roll it up here in the back we're gonna drill a couple little holes that locks the compressor in and I'll show you where that's gonna be at there's a plate that we're gonna screw into if you use the original plate 
uh, you will uh, use your existing. If it's a new plate like this one, that will change it just a little bit. So you'll see a hole back here. And there's another one uh, right over here on the, the back side. We'll get to it. So other than that, we're I'm going to show you there's there's going to be uh, a mount on the evaporator part. Get my camera tilted back up here. There we go. So we've got a hole right here that we're going to do. And there'll be another one, two right here for the pad mount. So two that'll go into there. Other than that, that's uh, compressors in. I'm gonna have to make a decision uh, where we're gonna put this. Sometimes I'll uh, take this thermostat, take this off for now. Probably I'll, I'll see how my clearance is. I like to keep this little piece pretty well where it's sticking out there where you can contr control the setup after you get it in there. So I'll probably try to maybe sneak it here in the back try and make a decision where I, I don't like it touching anything. This is supposed to be in the open air. So there's several things we can do to accommodate that. But if I can get it back behind that cooler here without touching anything, I think I can. That's probably where it'll end up at. So that pretty well covers the install. I mean, we won't spend too much time on bolting it up. But uh, compressor is in. Uh, as you see, it doesn't take very long. Boom, it's all together. Uh, next uh, piece will be uh, putting the the door together. I usually start with the main door. Obviously uh, putting the, the back on. I know a lot of people have asked questions on how the liner is attached, but uh, we will work on that next piece, getting that liner put on, uh, insulation. dealing with the, the interior chute. This one here probably should have taken it off. It was in really good shape, but uh, we'll, once we get all our tape off, I'll show you how to reseal that back up. That is a leak area, so you want to get that really sealed back up. But uh, stay with us. Uh, that'll be on our next uh, segment uh, with the main door. But cabinet is pretty well done except for putting the drum in and a couple little things that we'll tweak on that. But uh, thanks for staying with us. Uh, all the subscribers, I'm just overwhelmed by, I think we're at 110 subscribers, which had no, like I've said it before, just thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you like something that you're seeing here that helps you, give me that thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, jump on. We got a lot of good things coming up. Obviously, I'm working on a, the Vendo 81 at the same time. It will be the next series out. And then we'll be working on uh, starting on a couple of coolers. So thanks a lot, and we'll catch you on the next one.